Hey guys, it's Kelly. Did an art journal page last night and just thought I'd share it with you. Recorded it as I went. I used, I got some black color gesso and I was really curious. I just wanted to try something different. I have no idea what the heck I'm going to make <laughs> when I art journal. It's just a de-stressing type of thing. So I'm just kind of taking the time to go through my stuff to find out what I want to use. And I found that cool kind of like a homemade stencil thing where I used my Cricut Imagine and I cut out a bunch of little tags. I think I did that when I was um, going through my Delusions ink and just finding out how it worked out with different textures and, and different mediums and stuff. So so I decided I kind of liked that and I then I got an idea that maybe I would have like a page of like stained glass windows. So things are starting to take form and uh, I knew I wanted to use alcohol inks because I just love the way that that background looked. So I just wanted to try it with that um, black gesso background. And then um, I just took some white gesso and watered it down a little bit. I just put some water on my big old fat brush right there. And then just kind of blotted it on. I wanted it to have some funky texture to it. So I liked that big, the big brush pieces on there. So I just gessoed that on there and then dried it. And I was okay, you know, it's art journal. So I was okay that, you know, there's little parts of gesso that got there next to the binding. You know, I'm all right with that. So um, I just dried it up and I didn't really want a whole bunch of bubbles. So I tried not to let the bubbles happen because as I was drying it, I was like, mm, I think I want to use alcohol ink and the embossing powder. And I like how the embossing powder can kind of bubble up and make it look like really old glass. So I thought, well, if I'm going to do that with the alcohol ink, it'll kind of look like stained glass windows. So that was kind of the direction I was going. So I just I knew I needed a border around there. So there I'm just kind of playing with it and figuring out what I want. And there's some gate things that I printed off on my uh, Cricut Imagine. So I think there's some downtime in here where I'm just kind of figuring out what I'm doing, but but there's my clear embossing ink, and I wasn't sure how it was going to work, so I just kind of tried it on one of the little windows. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it on all of them or not, so I just kind of tried it and dumped it on there, and then I turned it. It turned out that I that I actually liked it, so I wound up doing it to all of it. But the embossing powder, you know it. You have, or the embossing ink, you need to put the powder on there pretty quick. It kind of dries. It stays a little bit wetter longer. It stays wet longer when it's on that gesso, but I was used to it drying really fast. So I was trying to hurry and only do a few at a time. And then I realized, oh, it's staying wet a little longer. So I wound up just doing it on all of them. So when there's no, there's just, I'm just smearing it on there, blotting it on there, and uh, not really being super careful whether or not the embossing ink goes outside of the frame of the little windows. I know they're tags, but I was I envisioned windows on this page. So, um, so yeah. So then I spilled some and lost some of it, but I have a whole other container of it, so I was okay with that. <laughs> and then I just say, forget it. I'm not even gonna save it. I'm just gonna rip off my top layer of my craft sheet. I usually use two layers of it depending on what I'm working on. So it's kind of hard to see it in the video but I mean it's melting the embossing powder and it's kind of getting a little shine. That embossing powder is kind of kind of like a matte fin finish. It's not real glossy and I kind of liked that for this. I mean I, I could have stuck some UD on there although I hate the way it blows around like crazy. It makes a big mess but it's a little finer and it kind of stays where you put it. So <clears throat> I'm getting out all my alcohol inks and and this time I decided to use um, the tool with the felt on it and it was okay but you know because I didn't want it to smear out all over I wanted it to stay on each little window so I'm just kind of playing with it just random colors just messing around with it until I find you know what I like And again, I didn't really have a plan for what I was going to do in the background, but I started off with some some pretty um, 
you know vibrant colors there with the purples and this in the stream color there, the stream is my favorite one and then I moved to some yellows and then to some browns and just played around with it and then I'm also putting um, on that felt pad after I put ink on there and put it down then I also put the blending solution on the felt tab so that I can just kind of blend it all around and let it let the ink move a little bit better since I wasn't just putting it directly on there and then I eventually just gave up and put the, the alcohol ink directly on there I just it just looks better that way it just I don't know why but it just winds up looking better like that <clears throat> and it's just there's not a lot of ink you know a lot of people are like oh darn it you're using so much ink don't waste your well it's it's drops literally like drops the alcohol inks really go a long way and you only need a little so I'm just putting a couple drops here and there but you know, it's it's non-stressful art journaling relaxation time for me. I'm not going to stress about using too much ink. I'm just going to do it <laughs> and enjoy myself. So, but so now it's starting to kind of come together. I'm kind of liking how, you know, the random colors are looking and it's kind of, the windows are kind of taking like that stained glass kind of look that I was looking for. So, and I just wanted random colors throughout it it's pretty cool how when you speed it up it the the inks and the blending solution just spread out super fast <laughs> I think it looks pretty cool but I do want to tell you guys be careful um, if you decide to try this technique I'm always ranting and raving about the embossing powder and the alcohol ink because I just love it um, I just think it it's so unique and cool but um, it did start smoking a little <laughs> So be careful when you're doing that, um, you know, between the gesso in the background and the embossing ink, when you start heating it up, you really, you got to be careful with it. So don't get it too, too hot. You got to really pay attention when you're doing it. So then I decided, hmm, I think I'm going to cover this. I think I want to do some stamping. I wasn't real sure what I wanted to do. So I wound up covering it with clear gesso and that was out of flint. My film stopped. And then, um, because the embossing powder underneath, it resists the gesso and it peeled off like skin. It was kind of weird. So once I got it wet, I just rubbed it off. And then I still had that cool kind of cloudiness look on the black gesso um, in the background. But then I just wiped off the clear gesso from each of the little windows. And I... I I didn't really know that that's what was going to happen, but I'm so glad that it did because I didn't want it to be all cloudy. I really liked it, the the colors, the way they were showing through. So that was kind of a boo-boo, but, you know, I'm okay with that. It was a good boo-boo, the way it turned out. So then I decided, hmm, these windows need frames. I messed with some molding paste and thought maybe I can use my molding paste and do like some real rugged like frames around each window. No, I didn't like that, so I wiped that right off. So this is just you guys sitting in my scrap room with me just playing while I figure out what I'm going to do. I wasn't quite sure, and then I decided, you know what? I am going to stick with the stamp deal and I'm finally getting to use my cool Prima stamps. I love those stamps. I wish, I wish I had bigger ones, but, um, they were perfect size for my little windows. I thought, Oh my gosh, how perfect. So I'm going to put a little scene in every window. And, um, I just put a bunch of stamps on there and I just loved it. It wound up looking really, really cute. And then some of the stamps I didn't even put in a block like that really long one there. Um, I kind of used the top portion of it on one window and the bottom portion on it on another one. Not the dress form there, but um, I think it's the next one. I'm not sure. No, that's a flower thing. That little flourish thing is really, really cute. Little vine. I wound up using that a lot. I think almost in every window. Just to kind of fill it in. But this was so much fun to make and it was it was unique and different and I don't know I get bored with doing the same thing over maybe you guys are the same way but I get bored with doing the same thing over and over again like I started off doing scrapbooking pages well 
I got bored with that really, really quick and had to move on to different things. And then I moved on to mini albums and I did a bunch of those and I love doing those. I still love doing those, but I just, I need to try different things and, and different techniques like daily. <laughs> I don't know. I just get I, it's bored with some things and then just, I want to try some, some new things. So, but just stamping away here with my archival ink. Not too much to talk through, but I really like that birdcage I just put down, too. That's really, really cool. And that's from a different tea something. I'm not sure, but that one with the dress form and the the birdcage with the little birdie in it and all that, that's the Prima one. Then the one next to it, hold on, let me grab it so I can tell you guys what it is. Maybe it's mystery because I don't see it. Oh, here it is. T TPC Studio. Hmm. Vintage bird cages, rubber cling stamps. <coughs> I think I got that at Michael's. It was on sale. I think I got the whole pack for like three ninety nine or something. So. So then I pull out my Tim Holt stamps. I've only got like three. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of his stamps. I love them. I just think they're a little overused sometimes. And anytime you get stuff out, it's just all the same. I don't know. I love them. The ones I have, I really like. And he's got some new ones that I'm thinking about getting too. But um, he's so popular and I, I just love the guy. I love his style and everything. But I just think they're a little overused. So there I'm just stamping some text, a text type of stamp all over. Can't really see it too well, but just kind of filling it in. I love how that stamp worked out. I'm putting it everywhere, as you can tell. So sorry about the glare on my um, block. <laughs> it's like a big sun <laughs> or moon or something right there. Then I stamp, what's that? I think that's butterflies or, or no crowns I did a couple different crowns one that's a little bit bigger the Tim Holtz one and then one that's a little bit smaller the Prima one super cute I loved those stamps they just fit perfectly and I wasn't quite done with my cool little vine stamp This is how it is. It's crazy in my scrap room. I just get in there and I usually listen to music and I just go, just do my thing. Don't really have a plan. Oh, this little key, tiny, tiny little key stamp. So cute. I think that's the bird one or the... Yeah, I decided I was going to put a bird in the cages. So hopefully you guys go through this too, where you're just kind of sitting there going through your stamps, going, hmm, what do I really want to do? <laughs> I don't think I can speed it up anymore, otherwise it would just be a big blur But to get through that. But it was a lot of little, little stamping here and there. Then I was kind of stuck. I was sitting there going, what the heck else am I going to do to this? It was obvious to me that I needed to frame out the windows and put a border around the page. So um, my new border stamps that I got the other day, these are also TPC Studio. 
And these were also on clearance, I think at Michael's. It was either Michael's or Joanne's, I can't remember. But I just used some ochre, okra, whatever you call it, paint, and stamped with my, with paint on there because there's that like soft kind of vintage photo color in the background there that came from like the ginger and the latte alcohol link so I kind of wanted to accent that a little bit as opposed to the the purpley pinky stuff so I kind of like how that worked out I was debating either I go with flat out white or kind of like this this yellow color I like the yellow because afterwards I wind up using white elsewhere but and that's just a little felt pad that I decided to use to apply the paint to the stamp because I didn't want to just it would it would get all blotchy so that worked out really well to get on there I could have used a brush too but then it would go into each little crevice and I really liked all the little details in that so I just grabbed a felt pad and just dabbed it on there with the paint and that worked really well something I hadn't done before so for those real intricate stamps that you need to stamp with paint that the felt tabs work good and then I just used the extra paint with a little bit of water on my finger just to kind of outline the outside of the page. It's really hard to see that, but it did add a little bit to it. When you look at the page close up, you can really tell. But I didn't want to smear my, my cool border. And then my new stamp, I'm freaking out. You know, I, I just, I got to clean things as I go. It's just kind of the way I do not like my space where I'm working to be a complete disaster and I get my wrists and my hands and my sleeves and, and stuff on my <laughs> I personally just can't function like that I have to clean it as I go so sorry you guys have to watch me clean stuff but I mean that way I don't have this big pile of stuff that I need to clean when I'm done when I'm done I'm done and I can you know move on to the next project or bed which is the case in this one because I this was last night at about 1 a.m. So now I'm liking it, but I need to do something. And this is where I just play with things and I just decide what I like and what I don't like. And I think it's cool to see this kind of stuff because, you you know, we all try things and like, nope, didn't like that. Okay, now I'll try this. Nope, didn't like that. So I tried my charcoal pen to try and outline. Even though it had a black background, I thought maybe the charcoal black would, would show up really, really dark. It didn't. I didn't like that. And then I tried the yellow paint to frame each window and I did not like that either um, I tried it and then tried to kind of smear it around a little bit it just didn't work and then um, you know once I smeared it around then I tried to wipe it off it was still on there so to kind of cover that up when I decided no I really don't like that at all I went back to my charcoal uh, pencil and then just colored it in so that it would match with the black background and just kind of undo what I had done with that yellow paint until I found what I actually wanted to do and I kept going back to my white jelly roll pen and I was like eh, I want to try something different because I use that so much but hey it works go with what works so I wind up after sitting here thinking staring at it for a little while um, I wind up um, using paint blots so in my mini mister, I put about three quarters water and then the other quarter uh, white acrylic paint. And um, I just took the, the mister sprayer out and just slapped it on there and then blotted it with the, the paper towel because it needed some, some white in there. So some depth and that worked. And then I busted out the jelly roll pen and that was the answer to just they aren't, you know, it's, I can't, can't really say it's doodling, but I just randomly, um, s colored around the outside, just draw lines around the outside, almost like you would distress if each one was individual. It was like distressing the outsides of them. It was not a complete straight line. I would bring the pencil up and just do it here and there or the pencil, the pen, whatever. And that was what I needed just to kind of outline each picture and make them pop a little bit more. I think that wound up working out really well. If 
few more slaps of the white paint with the water. And dry it a little bit so that I get those white, <clears throat> those white like circles around the paint and then dab it. I like that. And then I'm done. And there I am showing it to you. And all the colors disappeared there. How weird. Because, oh, because the light was gone. So, and there's some still pictures of, um, close-up pictures of it. So that was my art journal page for last night. Fun stuff with embossing powder, alcohol ink, stamps, paint, black gesso, all that good stuff. So I hope you guys like it. Thank you for watching and more to come on art journaling. Thanks.